back everyone, Miss Nancy here with Aza Memorial Library and I have a ton of young adult titles to show you that are fabulous. Uh, most of them are fantasy. There has been an explosion of fantasy and fairy tale remixing, retelling in the YA world lately, but then I have a few realistic fiction that I loved. So I'm going to start with the first one. This cover is so awesome. It's called The Sin Eater's Daughter by Melinda Salisbury. And this is a dystopian fantasy where lies and deception and are weaved around myth. And they're designed, these lies and deception in the story are designed to keep a really evil, evil, despotic, crazy queen in power. So the main character is Twyla, or Twilla. I don't know how you pronounce it. I kind of decided I would say Twyla. Um, she has been tapped to be part of the deception. And um, she is the executioner in this world. So what she does is anybody who's um, deemed a traitor, she lays her hands on them and they instantly die. So of course no one wants to get near 10 feet of her because they think that if she touches them they will die. Um, and she is also um, chosen to marry the prince and be the next queen. So as the story unfolds we see the truth kind of slowly cracking that web of lies and um, Twyla is torn between everything she has learned in her entire life and what she's finding out is really true. Um, there is a rival kingdom and a citizen of that kingdom is ordered to guard her and that creates more lies and deception and um, a bit of a romantic attraction. And the prince himself, well he has seen the world beyond this this kingdom and he wants no part of it so he's trying to destroy the kingdom. Um, it is a well written first person account of someone questioning loyalty and what is real and what she should be. Um, I loved this book and Salisbury, um, she's a British author and she said that she was influenced by Roald Dahl who's the king of quirky fantasies um, like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. As a child she read a lot of Roald Dahl so we can see that through here. So try The Sin Eater's Daughter by Melinda Salisbury. My next book has been on the New York Times bestseller list for a long time. It may still be there and it's a young adult uh, novel. It's called The Red Queen. Um, this is set in a kingdom where um, that is a little more modern than we're used to. We're used to medieval kingdoms um, with no modern technology. There aren't any cell phones or computers, but there is electricity in this kingdom. So there are two kinds of people in this kingdom, reds and silvers. Silvers are the rulers. They bleed silver. They are rich. They each have, each house or family has a paranormal power. Um, and the reds don't have that. The reds are the slaves. They serve the silvers. They make everything for the silvers. And they also are the ones that die in a war that's been raging for over a hundred years. They're the ones to go off to war. So the main character is Mare, and she is a red. Um, she tells this tale. She's also a pickpocket, and that's how she helps her family with income. Um, She's almost at the age that she's going to be drafted as a soldier. So if you don't have a useful job, you have to go to war. Her best friend has just lost his job, and he is now going to be drafted. So her plan is to use her pickpocketing to um, stop her friend from being drafted. But of course, she ventures too far. And um, soon she ends up at court, engaged to the younger brother of the heir to the throne. And uh, this younger brother has been fighting this kingdom and wants to get rid of it, totally. So there's a lot of action, a lot of political intrigue. Um, Mare herself reveals that she has a power um, and a red should not have that, which creates all kinds of problems. 
she becomes a member of the resistance movement, movement and um, then they enslave her into a whole nother um, part of the story. There's a lot of unexpected twists and turns and everything threatens to ruin Mare and the kingdom. I couldn't put this book down. I found all the characters to be believable. I found the descriptions of the powers to be wonderful. Everything is so detailed and bright. And um, I did not see the end to this installment coming. And I can't wait for the next one to show up. Um, there's a lot right now of um, Game of Thrones wannabes. Um, and this one stands out and I highly recommend it. It has a cover too. This next one you'll take one look at and say well this is Game of Thrones. Um, this book has been described as Game of Thrones meets fairy tales and that's how the publishers are capitalizing on, on it because this illustration this character sure looks like Daenerys to me. So this is actually a reworking of Sleeping Beauty and Beauty has sacrificed herself in order to save her daughter Aurora who is now fighting an evil queen um, who has stolen Aurora's father's throne. And this queen has captured her brother and uh, has condemned him to die. So in the beginning, there's a lot to keep track of, but if you hang with it, it's also interesting. You won't want to put this book down. So there's a touch of paranormal thrown in here. Um, she has powers of strength, endurance, and bravery but it comes with a curse. Anyone she kisses becomes this loyal zombie person who just follows her around, and so she knows that if she kisses anybody that she likes, um, she's not going to know any kind of romantic love because they are, they are not going to be able to return it. Um, so she disguises herself as a boy, and she goes out to create an alliance with a prince now this prince also has a curse on him. His father wants to uh, maintain the throne and his immortality, so he has cursed all his sons to turn into swans at, on their 18th birthday unless they marry. There's only one princess left in the realm, and that is Aurora. So the prince is on a quest to find this princess so he can uh, avoid being turned into a swan. Um, I love retelling of fairy tales, and this one didn't disappoint. The writing was great, the descriptions are wonderful, um, there's a lot of emotion put into the telling, and there are a lot of fairy elements that are weaved in and out of the story. I liked Aurora, I liked the relationship between her and Nicholas the Prince, um, especially when he doesn't know that she's female, and then it gets even more interesting when he finds out. Um, Stacy J did previously did a reworking of Beauty and the Beast, and I think I'm going to go back and read that one. So try Princess of Thorns by Stacy J. Now the next one has gotten a lot of good reviews from the um, young adults that I've recommended this to. Um, it's called Mark of a Thief by Jennifer Nielsen. She was the author of the Ascendants trilogy, which started with the False Prince. And in The Mark of the Thief, we find ourselves in Rome about 300 years after Caesar's death. So the empire is very fragile, and it's being held together by a lot of politics and gamesmanship. There's a senators and generals that are all chomping at the bit to uh, get that throne, get that um, emperor status. Um, so we, thought we, uh, we meet Nicholas who is a slave in the gem mines. And he has been tasked to retrieve Caesar's bulla. So a little bit of a history here. Bulla, a bulla was a locket that were, was given to Roman boys. Sometimes it would contain um, precious gems. And it was said to ward off um, evil. And um, so they, they, had, they kept them and the boys liked them. Well, Caesar's bulla, of course, from when he was a kid, is believed to have all this power and magic and so everybody wants this thing. Well all, one slave has already died trying to get it for the general and another slave went mad and so now Nicholas has to try to get it. It's being protected by a griffin which is a half bird half lion mythical creature. So Nicholas does get that bulla but he doesn't give it up. 
and he thus and this begins this very fast-paced story of about ambition and the lengths people will go to try to be the ruler of the known world. Um, what I liked about this story was, besides all the the wonderful writing and the magic and the twists and the turns, was that uh, Nielsen gives us a little bit of a taste of what living in the Roman Empire at that time was like. We learn about slavery and how cruel it was. We learn about all the power um, games that went on, and we learned about how Romans. We learn about how Romans really had a lot of superstitions and belief in magic. Um, we also see that the gladiator games that we're so familiar with were really just a way to keep um, regular people from revolting. And that was a really gruesome way to do it, but that's how they did it. So this is the first in a series, and I am really looking forward to the next installment. Mark of the Thief by Jennifer Nielsen. This one is a really special one. It's thick and it's great. It's called An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. And you could compare this to the Hunger Games, um, especially for its actions, and its characters, and some of the plot. I couldn't put this book down. And according to Internet Movie Database, there is a movie planned for 2015. So. It's a lot like ancient Rome, but it's not ancient Rome. Um, there is an empire that exists, and there is a, a requirement that you vow allegiance to the empire, um, or else you're executed. So the main character is Laia, and she's a slave in this world, and her brother is arrested for treason. So she tries to rescue her brother, and she connects with the resistance movement, um, and they quickly demand that she enter a um, elite military training academy as a slave to serve the uh, students and also as a spy. And in the academy is a boy named Elias and he is just about to graduate. He's going to have this mask which is a silver uh, face piece that eventually molds to your face and you can't take it off um, and combines with your skin. But Elias doesn't like this world that he lives in and his plan is to desert right after he graduates. Except right on graduation day, it is announced that he is going to fight in a series of trials with three other students, and whoever wins is going to be the new ruler of the kingdom. So it's a very cat and mouse kind of game. There are loyalties that are betrayed, there are betrayals that turn into loyalty, and um, Elias' best friend may, tr may prove to be a bitter enemy. Um, res the resistance movement is not as honest as it should be, and um, everyone has to choose which side of history they're going to land on. There's many, many twists and turns in this plot. Um, it's done in present tense writing, in alternating, mostly alternating chapters between Laia and Elias. And, um, this is, was only supposed to be a standalone novel, but on the internet, fans are clamoring for more. And Tahir kind of left it, not as a cliffhanger ending, but as um, there is a way for her to continue it if uh, the publishers so choose. Marie Lu, who is the author of the Legend series and um, the Young Elite, said that she missed a connecting flight because she was so engrossed in this book. And I guarantee you will not be able to put this book down. An Ember in the Ashes by Sa Sabah Tahir. Okay, our last fantasy is called Rook. And um, it's a very challenging book because you have to pay attention to all the dialogue. I'm going to put it down for a minute because I want to show you a couple other books. Uh, it's written by Sharon Cameron, who wrote one of my favorite fantasy books called The Dark Unwinding, so I recommend you try that one a few years earlier. And it's based on an old, old book called The Scarlet Pimpernel, which started out in the early 20th century. It was written by a baroness. And it was a play first, and then it was a novel. And um, so you have to know a little bit about this one to go in. So this book, The Scarlet Pimpernel, is about um, the French Revolution and the Reign of Terror, where all the aristocrats were getting their heads cut off by the guillotine. 
um, it features a wealthy Englishman who rescues all his um, French counterparts um, from the guillotine. And some say that this wealthy Englishman's character, the character is a springboard for Batman. So I thought that was kind of interesting to know. So now we'll go back to Rook. Now, um, Rook is, Cameron is asking this question in Rook. Are we destined to repeat history over and over and over and over? Which we all know, make the same old mistakes. Um, so this is, this is set way in the future, but it's like um, the French Revolution all over again. Um, all of our modern technology has been lost. There's been a plague that has, uh, you know, left half the population dead. And uh, we're basically back to square one. There are even artifacts from our time that are stumping the characters. They don't know. They have this Nintendo controller, and they don't know what it is. They have this disc that is actually a, a photo CD um, with lots of images. And they hear there's lots of images on this thing, but they have no way to pull them out. Um, in the process of all this happening, England is now called the Commonwealth. France is not France anymore. Um, Paris is not the city of light like we, could, we know it. Um, and there's a guy in charge who's trying to keep um, the technology buried, and he's having all the uh, wealthy class beheaded by something called the razor. So we enter, so it, we enter with Sophia, and she is the rook. So she travels back and forth between the Commonwealth and what is France um, to free prisoners from the prisons. Um, she does it in disguise and she's very famous. It's kind of this, you know, mythical savior person. Nobody can catch her. And, uh, but suddenly she is forced to become engaged to a um, wealthy Frenchman named René in order to save her father's estate. Um, he appears to be an idiot but he is actually her intellectual match. And so what follows is a wonderful cat and mouse game between Renee and Sophia as they try to best each other with their plans. Um, and then you have to, as you're reading, you're like, are they in opposition of each other? Or are they really connected? Um, and that's the fun of this book, trying to figure it out. I went back and forth figuring Renee is good. No, Renee is bad. Renee is good. Renee is bad. And there's a whole lot of other characters like that too. You're trying to figure out who's good, who's bad, what's, what's the truth. Um, and that's why you have to pay attention to the dialogue. It's very stimulating. The last hundred pages are extremely exciting and there's a whole lot of lies told in that. And uh, digging out the truth is, is a fun thing to do. There's, the writing is excellent. Renee and Sophia do this chess-like dialogue back and forth that's just wonderful to read, and I'd love to see it on the screen. And everyone is scheming. Some people are winning and some are losing. So try Rook by Sharon Cameron. Now we're going to move to realistic fiction, and I have three titles to show you real quick. Um, the first one... Um, I loved because it's about bullying, which is always in the news. And if you have ever wanted to be an avenger of, for an, a, vic, a victim of bullying, um, you'll learn that the consequences of doing something like that is not necessarily so fabulous. Um, so Lauren here has been a victim of bullying. Um, she's, she's a victim of slander. And so she embarks on a course of making fun of him on the internet with her photography skills. She creates a website, she creates a persona, and then she uploads these photos and makes fun of him. And soon, she is avenging other victims of bullying with the same tactics. And everybody in the high school has got their phone set to alert when her next post um, appears. But is she right to do this? And that's the question you have to ask, because when things go too far, someone dies and Lauren is blamed for her part in it. In it. Um, there's a mysterious admirer that she has to, that taunts her through texts and messaging, and she has to try to track, track him down and find out who's stalking her. Um, and then an unlikely ally arrives, and um, the whole world implodes for her. Um, so what I loved about this story was the questions that readers would ask, like, um, is Robin Hood a thief, just a thief, or is he more than a thief? And uh, when you avenge 
a wrong, do you then just become like the oppressor? And what is truth? Is it only what we see? So this is set in an urban high school, but I think it could occur in any high school in America. And the, it had great writing and great food for thought. It's called Endangered by Lamar Giles. My next one is a really tough book, but it became very special to me at the end. And um, it's not for everyone. Uh, it's like its title, which is Challenger Deep, A Challenging Read. Um, and when I started this book, I kept asking myself, what is this about? Um, I couldn't figure it out. What's the ship in the book? Is Caden the character, um, is he descending into madness? Or is it something else? Is it just an allegory? What is this thing? But I kept reading, and I figured out that it's a story about serious mental illness. Um, and we bounce back and forth be between Caden's reality and Caden's delusions. Um, we learn that he's having these psychotic episodes and he is eventually hospitalized. And we see in Caden someone who's trying really hard to get well but get, 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 keeps getting pushed down over and over and over again. Um, there's a lot of metaphors in here and that's why it makes it a higher level book. Um, there's an image of the crow's nest, which uh, is where all the kids go to drink, and so you can look at it as everybody's trying to fit in with alcohol, or it does it mean um, people being medicated with medical cocktails. It's for you to decide. Um, Moby Dick is mentioned throughout the book, as well as um, Captain Nemo from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Uh, the white whale comes in. There's a Scantron sheet that comes to represent connecting all the dots. I loved all these images that Schusterman used. Um, so when you get to the end, you realize that making sense of your life is difficult at the best of times, but can be terribly, terribly hard when you're suffering from a mental illness. So I think that when people see others who are suffering from things like schizophrenia or bipolar, disorder, you will um, understand how hard it is for them. Uh, maybe after reading this you'll save someone's life as a result. Um, and at any rate, you'll come away with a much better appreciation for it. So what made this book special for me is Neil Schusterman has done a lot of YA novels. One of his biggest series is the Unwind series, which most kids, when they read it, they're just gripped and um, they love it. Um, but I learned at the end that he wrote this book because of his own son's serious mental illness. And um, he talks about being how his son Brayden was in the, Brendan was in the depths. And that's where the deep part comes, being down in the ocean. Um, his son drew a lot when he was going through. Uh, hospitalizations and I'll show you one of them so he includes those drawings and they're really a good illustration of how Caden the character is feeling at that moment and uh, it's they're very hard to make sense of but I'm glad he included them and Schusterman also includes a couple of pages of resources for people who um, are going through mental illness or you know someone who's going through mental illness so try Challenger D. It's a tough one, but it's by Neil Schusterman, who's an excellent writer, and I think you'll, you'll like it. And my last um, book, and my last realistic fiction, had to be Sarah Dessen. I love all things Sarah Dessen. She, this is her 12th novel. She's written so many young adult novels. Um, they've been translated into 25 languages. They often appear on um, best, best of YA lists and that kind of thing. And what I like about Sarah Dessen is she takes you on a journey of discovering, uh, a journey of coming of age without the over-the-top melodrama that so many of those types of novels have. So in Saint Anything, it, the title kind of refers to the Catholic tradition of assigning holy men and women um, saints, 
um, with a protector defender status of something or some idea or some concept. So for example, Saint Anthony in the Catholic tradition is the patron saint of lost things. Saint Jude is the patron saint of uh, unsolvable cases. Uh, saint Francis is the patron saint of animals and Saint Pancras is the patron saint of children. So in this uh, novel, we have a girl named Sydney, and her brother has just gone over the edge in high school. He's done all these terrible things, getting in trouble with the law, and finally he does this despicable thing, and he ends up in prison. And he's always been the focus of the family, and now he is still the focus of the family. Her mother is desperate for control. Her father is desperate to avoid any of this. Her parents are rich, and uh, Sydney suffers from all of this. Um, so in her loneliness, she begins a journey to a new school and new friends, and she discovers a family that who, who is unlike hers. Um, it's a lot of have and have nots. This family is not wealthy, but this family has qualities of love and compassion and togetherness that her family does not possess at all. Um, so what I love about Sarah Dessen is while she's taking you through this journey, she comes up with these great lines, like um, at one point she says, this whole experience, um, it just kept teaching. And that kind of is like life itself. You just learn your entire life. Um, and she has these wonderful descriptions of, the, of these things. Sydney is bearing all the guilt about a brother on herself, and Dessen in order to, for us to understand how heavy that guilt is, she describes it as like 10 of the drapes that they put over you at the dentist when you're going to have x-rays. So you can imagine one, and you know how heavy that is, think of 10 of them. And it was a perfect description for how Sydney felt as she dealt with her brother's situation. So I want you to try saying to anything and see where Sarah Dessen, Sarah Dessen will take you, and she will probably take you back to all her other novels. Saint Anything by Sarah Dessen. And that is all I have for you today. We're out here in the heat, not in the sun, and uh, enjoy these titles, and we'll see you next time. Bye.